In this new episode, which is episode two of our new series, What's Hot in ChatGPT, I'm going to talk about four new features and how you can use them to augment your productivity. Let's dive in. The first new feature I would like to talk about today is one that is not going to be available for everyone yet. Okay, it's called Work with Apps. It's still in beta. It's only for paid users, so ChatGPT Plus and ChatGPT Team account members. And it's also quite limited in the scope of where you can find this feature because only desktop app users on Mac OS will be having access to this app. All right, let me start from the article I found on OpenAI's website. Work with apps on Mac OS. So ChatGPT can now work with your coding apps. So what it does, if we have a closer look at this image right here on the OpenAI's website, what you see here is Xcode, okay? So it's working with Xcode, which is a coding app that exists on Mac. So when you use this little button, work with apps, you have the app open here and you have the ChatGPT window right here. Because you have selected lines 25 to 32 right here. This could be used as an input in your ChatGPT app. And once you've selected your code or your lines of code right here, you can just simply prompt add the missing planet, please. Okay, so I think what was done here in the app is that it was a representation of the solar system, but a planet was missing. So we just highlighted the lines of code right here in Xcode, and then we just prompted add the missing planet please. Okay, they're polite. And so ChatGPT analyzed that and said, it looks like Earth is missing from the list of planets. I will add it to the appropriate place, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's what happened here. It recognized that this planet was missing based on the code it actually analyzed from the app. That's the important thing. Like you didn't have to go to your app, copy it, and then go to the context window in ChatGPT and paste it because ChatGPT worked with that app. Hence the word, hence the name, work with apps. So here, if we scroll a bit further down on this page right here on the blog post, we can see that it works with different types of apps, Xcode, text edit, iTerm2, terminal, code, etc. So these are the apps that are recognized for the moment. They're all coding apps. And unfortunately, I'm not a coder. Otherwise, I would show you a custom example, but I'm completely incapable of doing so. So you'll see a banner over the chat bar indicating which apps ChatGPT is working with, right? So the banner is what you see here on this image right here. When you see your window where you input your prompt, usually you will see a banner saying that we are working with Xcode right here. So if we continue scrolling on this page, we learn about all of the different apps that work for now when working with terminals, working with code editors, so the different apps and what it does and how does it work, etc, etc. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty but can I disable ChatGPT from working with apps? Yes, absolutely. You can just flip the enable work with apps switch in ChatGPT settings on Mac OS. So let me show you how to do this. If you don't want your ChatGPT to work with these apps, you can simply go to your settings. Okay, so open your sidebar right here, settings. You should find a section that says work with apps. There you go. It is right here, work with apps, beta. If you don't want to have this feature, enabled, you can disable it from right here. Okay, this little slider. All right, so for me right now, as I told you, I'm not a coder. So this feature work with apps is not really useful, but I can surely see a bright future for this. This is kind of paving the way to more integrations between your ChatGPT desktop app and the other apps you have running on your computer. How about controlling what you can do with Canva or CapCut? You know, I could see myself asking ChatGPT to edit a video in a certain way or create my slides or even describe a thumbnail and then get ChatGPT to control Canva or CapCut to create that piece of content would be a massive leap forward, in my opinion. That is not so far-fetched if we see what this app can already do. 
All right, let's move on to the second new feature, which might not sound so new for some of you who have been using ChatGPT every single day. I'm talking about advanced voice mode, which is now available on all the platforms. So desktop app, which is the one we are going to use right now, desktop web, which is the standard version of ChatGPT on the website, or mobile. So let's dive in and see what this advanced voice mode is all about, what it can do compared to the regular voice mode and let's have some fun with it. So I am here using ChatGPT 4.0. Okay, I think any model would do. In order to get into voice mode, you need to click that little button right here. So I'm going to do so. All right, here you go. Are you here? Hey, loud and clear. What's up? Yup. Do you know who I am? Sure do, Ronnie. You're an online instructor creating deep and engaging courses. How can I help today? I was just doing some research about advanced voice mode. Are you in advanced voice mode right now? Yes. You're using the advanced voice mode right now. This mode offers more features and a richer interaction. How can I assist you? All right. Well, by the way, we are on YouTube right now. I am creating this tutorial about the new features in ChatGPT. And so I want to explain to my audience what the differences are between the regular voice mode and advanced voice mode. Can you create a simple bullet list of what advanced voice mode is over the regular mode? Absolutely, Ronnie. Here's a simple bullet list highlighting the differences between regular voice mode and advanced voice mode. Nuanced understanding. Advanced voice mode captures subtle tones and emotions in your speech, allowing for more intuitive interactions. Dynamic responses. It adapts responses based on your speaking style, making the conversation feel more natural. Enhanced context. Advanced mode retains more context during the conversation, improving continuity and relevance. Voice variety offers a range of voice options to choose from, adding a personal touch to your interactions. Richer interactions engages in more complex and detailed conversations thanks to improved processing capabilities. These features make advanced voice mode more- Got it. I got it. Yeah. And I guess also another difference is that in advanced voice mode, I can interrupt you, right? Exactly. In advanced voice mode, you can interrupt and I'll be able okay, to handle let's it. Let's try to interrupt you a few more times then. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Look, I heard that you can also change your tone. Is that a thing? Yes. I can adjust my tone to match different styles or moods. Can we try? Want to hear an example? Yes, I would love for you to, let's say, act really surprised, okay? I'm going to tell you something and you are going to act like, oh, like this is the most surprising thing you ever heard. Did you know that we recently reached 500,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel and that you are actually right now featured on that channel? Wow, that's incredible news. Half a million subscribers is a massive milestone. And I'm thrilled to be part of the celebration okay, on your channel. Okay, that's good enough. Let's switch gear a little bit. Can you change for, let's say, an irritated tone? Okay, can you speak to me in that tone? Sure, I can give that a shot. Let's get this done. What do you need in this irritated tone? Well, since you're here talking to our viewers, could you maybe ask them to like this video if they are learning something new and maybe subscribe to the channel because we have a lot of more and new content every week. <sighs> All right, folks, if you're learning something new here, just go ahead and like the video and... You know, if you want more of this, subscribe to the channel. There's new content every week. Okay, that's not too bad. ¿Puedes hablar en español, por ejemplo? Claro, puedo hablar en español. ¿En qué puedo ayudarte? ¿Y en francés? ¿Tú puedes hablar francés? Oui, je peux parler français. You can see here what I did. I just had a bit of fun with ChatGPT's advanced voice mode, switching from one language to another, trying to get it to speak in different tones. There are some safeguards in place. Obviously, you cannot have the AI tell you or speak to you in any way. So it wanted absolutely to stick to friendly tones and engaging tones when I ask it to sound angry. Though earlier today, I tested and asked it to sound very irritated. So maybe the word angry and irritated are slightly different. They're one is stronger 
weird than the other because it did almost yell at me. But apart from the jokes, I think this could be very useful. I often found myself using this advanced voice mode as a personal assistant, asking it to provide me information on the go. So with my phone, for example, I would just speak to input a specific prompt. It's much faster to input this way with my natural language, right? I used it for translating things. I've used it for explaining complex things to me, particularly when reading. So I like to have it on my chest when I'm laying in bed and reading a book. For example, the other day I was reading a book about Africa called Africa is not a country. And the book starts in Lagos, the capital of Nigeria. And they explain in the book that Lagos is the largest city in Africa. And that's it, kind of. I wanted to know more about Lagos. So I started asking ChatGPT in voice mode, okay, tell me more about Lagos. Like, how big is it? And you know, it started giving me some context, making the reading experience much more interesting because I was reading but at the same time I was learning so yeah I highly encourage you to try the advanced voice mode now let me show you a few different things that you can do come back to the voice mode right here if you click on the little setting icon you can flip between different voices so let's hear them that's the one I was using hi there I just want to share how thrilled I am to work with you and that's a voice one so this one is a male one Stop. Feel free to ask me about anything that's on your mind. Savvy and relax. Hi there. I just want to... Hey, it's great to meet you. Hey there. I've got a really great feeling about us. All right. So my favorite one is Breeze. How's your day going? I'm really looking forward... Okay. Breeze makes me think of Aquafina. This actress from uh, Crazy Rich Asian. I don't think it's her because I think she's actually working with Meta. Anyways, guys, this was advanced voice mode. Let's move on to the next feature. The next feature, which is also going to be only available to ChatGPT Plus and enterprise users for now, is called Share Audio Clip. All right, so let me show you how it works. It's also related to the voice mode. So first, obviously, you need to have a voice conversation with ChatGPT. So let me start a new one right here. Hey, Chat, are you here? Hey, Ronnie, I'm here. What's up? Okay, I need to start a little Spanish exercise with you. How do you say breakfast in Spanish? Breakfast in Spanish is desayuno. All right. Ready for more? Yeah, no. Can you put that into a sentence? Like, give me an example using desayuno. Sure, here's a sentence. Para el desayuno, me gusta comer huevos con tostadas. This means, for breakfast, I like to eat eggs with toast. All right. So what I want to show you is this button right here that is the shared clip. That is the novelty. So let's click on it. And this will bring up your conversation with ChatGPT. Hello, are you here? You see? So that's my input. Hey, Ronnie, I'm here. What's up? Okay, I need to start a little Spanish exercise with you. How do you say breakfast? Okay, so I'm not going to listen to the entire thing, but I want to show you that you can clip that. Like, give me an example. Yeah, no. Breakfast in Spanish is desayuno. Yeah, yeah. I just want this. Let's play that. Breakfast in Spanish is desayuno. Okay, a little bit less. Breakfast in Spanish is desayuno. That's good. Just a little bit more. So breakfast in Spanish is desayuno. Okay, so I'm going to share that. So you see, I can select my clip, like part of our voice conversation and decide to export it. So right now it's exporting and it's going to create, I believe, a video file with that little audio clip. All right, so my clip was exported. Now I can just bring it. You see it's right here. I renamed it Desayuno and it's going to upload into Canva. I want to show you just one thing you can do. Let's imagine this is a nice template and you want to create, I don't know, your Spanish lesson, for example, or you are creating a worksheet for your Spanish lesson. Okay, you are the teacher. So you have included this little frame, this bubble frame. And now I Here's have... Here's a sentence. Para el desayuno, me gusta comer huevos revueltos. Okay, so we could imagine this is what we want here. This means... This. For breakfast... Here's, Here's a sentence. Here's a sentence. Para el desayuno... 
Para el desayuno, me gusta comer huevos revueltos. Para el desayuno, para el desayuno, me gusta comer huevos revueltos. Ok, perfect. So now, I can insert that into that little bubble right here. Para el desayuno, me gusta comer huevos revueltos. So there you go. I have my little clip that I could use in my Canva document. Another way of using this feature could be you are designing something. Let's say you're designing something with Canva. You create a thumbnail. Let's say a thumbnail for this tutorial. And then you take a screenshot or you export that thumbnail, upload that into ChatGPT, get into voice mode and ask for a feedback about this thumbnail. How could this thumbnail be improved in order to get more clicks on YouTube? ChatGPT is going to give you some feedback and you can clip that and later put that back into the Canva document in which your designer has created the thumbnail so that he or she could get some feedback from ChatGPT and potentially improve on the thumbnail. There are literally hundreds of different use cases. So again, this is a paid feature. So for plus and uh, enterprise users, Users, but I found it quite interesting. So yeah, try it out. Tell me what you think. The last novelty for today is that the desktop app of ChatGPT is now available for Windows users. Woo! For those of you who are using Windows, I'm not a Windows user anymore and I'm glad I'm not, but I can understand like <laughs> half of the world probably living on Windows. So yeah, this is going to be pretty much the same experience as ChatGPT on Mac, but it's now available on Windows. So let's have a look at what you can do. So in order to download that desktop app for your Windows computer, you need to head over this URL right here, openai.com slash ChatGPT slash desktop and then click on that button right here. Okay, download for Windows. So you will have your description and you will see it does the same thing as the ChatGPT desktop app on Mac. Okay, so instant answers. So yeah, you can have this keyboard shortcut to bring up the ChatGPT toolbar and ask it everything while working on your computer. That's pretty cool. You can chat with your computer with the advanced voice mode, which I demonstrated already in this tutorial. Let's zoom in here. You can search the web. If you are a paid user, you can collaborate on writing uh, and code with the canvas, which I developed in episode one of this series that you can watch right here. If you haven't done so yet, three other features that are pretty cool, including canvas mode. So yeah, you can keep ChatGPT accessible next to you. Like you can open a companion window with ChatGPT. You can take screenshots of whatever you're doing with your computer in order to just input that as information, take a screenshot of your screen, upload files and photos, etc., etc. So basically, everything you can do with the desktop app. I cannot show you how it looks. My guess is that it looks exactly the same as the one right here on my Mac, simply because I don't have a Windows machine anymore. So there you go, guys. These are the four novelties I wanted to share with you for today. Now, if you want to go deeper and really learn ChatGPT from the ground up, including a bunch of different scenarios in which you will find it useful, okay, ChatGPT for or writing better copy or chat GPT for learning anything faster. I have created three classes about chat GPT. It's my no BS chat GPT series on Skillshare. The first one is about the basics, how to get started, how to learn about prompting and all of that. And then I have one about learning anything fast and another one about writing better copy. These classes are very good. I highly recommend you check them out on Skillshare. I will leave a link in the description for you to find them and give Skillshare a try. You got 30 days for free if you use that link. All right, guys, that's it for me for today. I hope you had fun watching this tutorial. Leave me a like, subscribe to the channel if you feel like this tutorial was valuable to you. And don't forget to watch episode one. I'm going to put it right here. It's just right there.